Did you uh, bring any other dresses? I can have. No. <laughs> no. He gets we to do not... it. No. <laughs> he gets to do it because he brought it and did not ask. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. My name is James, and I am the Keeper for this game of Call of Cthulhu that we are playing. Today we are playing Reign of Terror, continuing uh, the third episode in this short campaign set during and surrounding the French Revolution. I am here, as I always am, with my wonderful cast, and I'll get them to introduce themselves in just a second. But first of all, I'd like to thank Roll20, Sirenscape, and Web Captioner, tools that we use to improve our games. I'd also like to talk about the Call of Cthulhu classic Kickstarter, which we have just uh, put live. So if you are a fan of the classic Call of Cthulhu released by Chaosium and want to check out where all of this madness started, then please check out that. There'll be a link for it in the description of the YouTube video that we put out. I would also encourage people to check out the Malleus Monstorum, which has just released on Roll20. So you can now in uh, include all kinds, all manner of mysterious and wonderful beasts in your games of Call of Cthulhu on Roll20. Thanks for joining us, and without further ado, let's jump into our player introductions. So, uh, well, Art, uh, do you want to jump in first? <laughs> Suck it. It's skipped. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Art. Uh, in this particular campaign, Dave usually goes first, and apparently I do this time. So, hi, I'm Art. Um, I am playing <laughs> Joseph Hugel, uh, who is a vivandier or provisioner in, in the French army. And uh, we've all just discovered that the Dauphin is dead, and there's a creepy guy who throws very Atlantic parties, and we're gonna break in. Also, Joseph Hugel is actually his own wife, uh, Martine Hugel. <laughs> who is pretending to be her husband, Joseph, because her husband lost a leg and they need food. So, yeah. A detail which is not confusing in the list. Nope. Mm. Um, Dave, do you want to jump in? <laughs> uh, yeah, g'day. I'm Dave and I'm playing Sergeant Thierry Renault. Uh, I lead this small band of investigators. Uh, I am a... I think last time I said I was a devout monarchist. I would now say I am an unwavering monarchist um no i need like a level below devout but not questioning yet it's it's a slippery wavering? slope Waver yeah, wavering no, like, i'm not wavering yet i'm just you are a loyal monarchist what's the step before wavering loyal just regular monarchist <laughs> yeah, regular just, monarchist. You're a loyal yeah, you're monarchist. Right. i'm a monarchist <laughs> i think the king's got some good ideas um and finally jackson Hey, that's me. I'm Jackson, and I'm playing Christophe Pressy, who was uh, raised in a church, didn't find the calling from the church, but found calling as a soldier and is going to be France's uh, great hero of our age any day now. I'm sure there's something, some grand uh, country shaping event will happen where he can prove his worth. Don't count on that. Oh, you know, yes. Yeah, political environment in, in France. I think it seems stable. There's nothing going to happen. It's a bit too in. stable, isn't it? Yeah. A couple of ideas. <laughs> a couple of days, rather. It's fine. Um, Just so long as everyone keeps their head, they're good. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let's not lose our heads, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, so far in Reign of Terror, our investigators were stationed doing guard duty for the Paris Catacombs before they went across to investigate the murder of a printer at his printing press and murder of his family as well. Um, they have basically figured out that the culprit seems to be the mysterious Comte Fenlic, an aristocrat in the French courts. They have teamed up with Cap Capitaine Malon, who is their, well, you know, their boss, so they have to team up with him. But also Dr. Rigaud, the uh, chief physician and the uh, man who was in charge of protecting the life of the Dauphin, who has been very sick, the Prince of France, unfortunately, though, the Dauphin has since died, uh, to try and stop um, uh, Comte Fenlic. Unfortunately, 
it's a little dicey, so they need some hard proof. We pick up our story again as the investigators are trundling along towards the town of Poissy, which is a little bit outside of Paris. And it is getting towards evening. The sun is just starting to set and the thick woods that surround the town are cutting into the sunlight, so it filters through. It could be nice, but it's uh, in, in the kind of current context, it's a little bit sinister. You know that night is coming soon and the Comte Fenlique's mansion is just nearby. Poissy is this relatively small little town. Um, there's a, 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 you know, a, a couple of houses scattered around a large church, Notre Dame de Poissy. And um, you can see people beginning to move their, um, uh, their, you know, their families inside as the sun sets. There is a slightly foreboding aura about the place. The collection of you came on horses. Um, so each of you are, uh, you know, looking very much the, the typical French soldier and you'll be making quite an impression as you arrive, unless you've planned differently. What's, what, is, what does it look like as you all I, come in? And also, if any of you are particularly uncomfortable on horses, let me know. I think we, we were saying that we were going to come in in, like, commoner garb, right? We, we've mm. stripped our, mm. our uniforms. In yeah, fact, no I sense in letting them you were going to come into the actual Comte Fenlique's manor like that. Are you actually going to go into Poissy as well in disguise? Well, there's no point That's going into... a bad idea. What, yeah, I don't know why we'd come in in, in uniform if it's going to... If word will get around, right? Sure. I mean, it, it's it's not like they're, they're, you know, the manor is not inside Poissy. It's a little bit further out. So if a word, word to spread, it wouldn't be accidental. But also nothing we're doing is official. Everything is unofficial. This whole thing is slightly dodgy. Absolutely. Well, dodgy... I mean, you are you are under orders from Capitaine Malon. You're just doing something that is very um, inflammatory. So you could lean on your authority, but absolutely, if you want to come in common a garb, you, that totally makes sense. And if Fenley does have anybody watching inside Poissy, it will avoid um, them sprinting off to inform the court. Also, it's one less change of clothes. Keep things simple. Absolutely. Okay. In which case, well, let's assume maybe that you've for set you. up camp <laughs> a little... <laughs> Let's assume you've set up camp a little bit down the road, um, got your horses off the off the beaten track so nobody's going to come across them, and you've put on your commoner's garb, um, and you're now heading into the town. Uh, Hugel, can I get you to make a disguise check? And this will sort of qualify everybody. Have you you've gone over their outfits and tried to make sure that everybody is looking relatively, um, you know, passable? Okay, Sassy. good. Yeah, everyone. Everyone has, has, you know, roughed up their, their appearance a little bit. You all pass uh, relatively well as commoners. So, yes. So, because I think this is funny. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not in masculine commoner attire. I borrowed a dress from my sister. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and because my sister is shorter than me, it's like not quite the right length. So it still kind of looks like... I am a man who is dressed in his wife's clothes, and obviously they are too small for me. <laughs> <laughs> but are you in like like a full, sorry, like a dress, or just like slightly feminine, like still pants and things? Uh, have you seen like seventeenth, eighteenth century French clothing? I'm just. Are you in a full blown like woman's dress? Yeah, okay. I do. I do have my like my pants on underneath the dress. Like I'm still. You know, in the whole, like, I am still a man and I wear pants, but also, hello, I am I, in a dress. I'm not sure I understand what <laughs> you yell, do you not have pants? Why are you wearing that? <laughs> well, we were going in as servants, so it would make sense that, you know, to be the most uh, disguised, you would go as the sex you are not, no? It's a very good disguise, huh? It is like a confusing it. disguise. Oh, I like mostly. it. Mostly. Did you uh, bring any other dresses? I can have. No. <laughs> no. He gets we to do not... it. No. <laughs> he gets to do it because he brought it and did not ask. <laughs> you. I mean, I, I do, do have like. A, 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 no more dresses. One of you, I, that's okay, but multiple, no. No, 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 no. This is only going to get more comfortable. You, we all look 
way too masculine for this. <laughs> it will not sell. Pressy, maybe I could see it. I, uh, well, I do you, saw, okay, I, well, shall, shall I give Pressy the dress and I will stay in the, the mask? I don't mind. It that's fits easy. you the best already. I, I just I, thought this was a platoon where we can express ourselves, but... Uh... Look, Pressy, come here. We we'll swap, we we'll swap. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'll, I'll drag no, it's fine. Him it's fine. It's fine. Um, so, Pressy, uh, at you girl's insistence, will you take the dress? Uh, if Ugel demands it, then I will. I will, I will, I won't demand it, but I'll be like, come on, Pressy, you, you know you want to. I do. <laughs> okay. The worst, the worst <laughs> this, is, this is the dumbest <laughs> argument I've ever heard. Like, th because the best disguise he could make is dress as a sex you're not sure it's an extra layer of obfuscation <laughs> but it just means they're immediately gonna be like that's a bloke wearing a dress what the i'm gonna investigate them first no because i succeeded my disguise check that is a it's very a handsome agree. woman I thank agree. you very much i agree yeah, girl's got know. a really good disguise <laughs> yeah. skill uh, uh so so you know uh pressy you wear the dress it it it, it is uh it is a dress. Is um, it flattering? Uh, Renault, uh, do you have a beard, Renault? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm clean shaven. Okay, well, but perhaps, but perhaps next time you can wear it. Um, no. Anyway, um, <laughs> so um, the collection of you have moved your effects. You've gotten in your very elaborate disguises, and you are now going through into uh, the the town of Poissy. Um, it's pretty unremarkable, but as you begin to stroll through, you know, you can see a tavern off to one side. You can see houses. Um, can I get... Uh, who has the highest listen score? And can I get you to make a listen check? Uh, hey. listen, eh? 56. Ooh. Are you seriously 56? I, I literally leveled up like you've we did got, our advancements and I got a one. point. Oh, I well, got, got a point. One now. You are the highest. <laughs> I'm 55. 75. Ooh. Ooh. All right, Pressy's doing the listening. All right, Pressy. Unfortunately, uh, you, 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 all you're... the cat callings getting in the way. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're too you're too busy, kind of um, trying to maintain your disguise to listen to exactly what people are saying. But you do all notice that the streets appear to be emptying. They are, people are going inside and the sun isn't really fully set yet, but everybody is getting off the streets quite early. Um, the bells at the church begin to ring, sounding the hour. Um, you know that Fenleek's mansion is just a while up the road. If you would like, you can start heading there now, or if there's any investigation you want to do around Poissy, now is the time. That's uh, interesting, is it not? It, um, it's very <laughs> intéressant, depending Why, uh, on your, um, depending on what you qualify as intéressant. I think, I think you wearing a dress is intéressant, but you know. <laughs> why, 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 why are people leaving town? They're not leaving the town so much as they are going into their, uh, their, their homes. You know, they're oh, getting out off the streets. They're, 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 they're getting still, inside, retiring it's still early. Odd that people are like the vast majority of people are retiring early, though. Like. Yeah, I mean, depending on what time of year it is and how much light and how warm it is, maybe not, but, you know. What uh, what, what time of night is? Is sun setting? Sorry? Sun is setting. It's 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 still early enough that, you know, if you were in any other town, people would be about on the streets uh, do, performing some final piece of the day's work. And in some towns, you know, in some parts of Paris, people would be out well later than this um, as they all, uh, you know, went off to drink and party and things like that. So okay. um, this is unusual. Um, uh, just thank you very much for the gift subs, by the way. Anyways, they're very, very, <laughs> very lovely of you. Just uh, scale wise, how big is Poissy? Um, specifically compared to say, uh, my only scale is Paris, and I know Paris okay. is very large. Uh, so... It is. It is not Paris. It is. It is. Um, where else have we been recently? Oh, Versailles. How how big is it compared to where we were recently? I mean, Versailles is kind of a singular palace without without really a community around it. Poissy is its own town. Um, you would call it a satellite town to Paris. There are probably a couple of hundred people who live here. It has its own church. Um, is uh, it Geelong? 
John's pretty deep, big. Deep Australian cut there. Uh, deep? It's over there. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm looking at it. it it's Bendigo. Yeah, it's, it's Bendigo. It's that kind Is of it Bendigo? Okay. Uh, well, it helps me. I don't know about the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone immediately googling Bendigo, the, learning the pop- all the two things that there is to know about. It's just getting scale. What's the population? Is is the question to ask? A couple of hundred yeah, people. A couple of hundred. Me. There you go. I think Bendigo's more got more like than that. Beachworth and Bendigo, really. Yeah. Okay. Who's <laughs> <laughs> into Bendigo? <laughs> um. All right. Uh. I don't know. I don't think we need to hassle these 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 fine folk. I think. Renault is pretty distracted by the task at hand. I'm double checking all my gear. I've like hidden my pistols under a little waistcoat. Yep. Um, I also think I, I Hugo, Hugo, rather, did you procure the the disguises that we have? Okay. I, th- I think that makes sense, given that I am literally the person who does the procuring in this yeah, particular regiment. <laughs> yeah. So yes, yes, I did, and oddly, with the exception of like the dress. Most of it fits everyone pretty well, because I spent a lot of time probably helping to like keep uniforms clean yeah. and neat, so I kind of know everyone's sizes. Do we have the rest of the the boys with us? Dupois, etc. Um, I, I yeah, I would assume that you've left them at the camp, but if you have special orders from them, you can absolutely. No get sense them leaving them in the camp, and those are good bodies I can come yep. with. Okay, right. So they've they've popped along with you. Um, they're also in you know um, similar uh, similar uh, clothing. Um, Dupois is going. I will not wear a dress. You cannot make me wear a dress. <laughs> but but uh, the, the, yeah, the others he does so protest a bit too much. Me <laughs> thinks. <laughs> Someone speaking from experience. <laughs> the, the lady doth protest too much. <laughs> um, All right. Um, well, if this party is going to be kicking off this evening it seems best we get in ideally we get inside the grounds before people are moving in so we might head there now and as soon as night falls ideally get into the estate i presume it's gonna be walled or something uh before carriages start moving through so we can plot from there how does that sound yep that sounds fantastic so Rather than stick around in Poissy, the collection of you decide you want to make tracks, try and get there a little early. You can Probably see not. the road that heads out towards Fenleek's Manor, weaving through the trees, and you move through uh, the town as you see people scattering on the streets. Hugel? I just wanted to take... A, it, it's something I want to be doing while we're moving through the town. I want to see if... Do the townsfolk have the same scars on their faces as Fenrik's servants did. Oh, that's a very good point. Uh, make for me a spot hidden check or a psychology check. I'll take either. I will go spot hidden because it's 70 versus 45. Boom, boom. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So it is not a common thing, you know, when you were looking at the when you were looking at uh, Fenleek's servants, they all had marks that uh, made it look like that he was beating them, basically. That he was, uh, you know, a very cruel uh, master to each of these people. The, the people in Poissy do not all have that kind of um, scarring, but one or two of them you spot do, and it's quite extensive. Um, mm. You would guess that you know, they must have run afoul of the Comte at some point and he has attacked them. Um, but it's not like he has he has control over the entire town. No, but there's like enough of like one or two people badly enough that you could you could make the jump to mm-hmm, maybe these people are a little more worried about their neighbour than some others might be. Yes, that would be a very, very logical jump to make. So the collection of you, after having noticed these details, uh, move forward and start heading up through the woods towards Comte Fenlick's house. You are actively trying to beat the carriages, and they're going to get there pretty quickly. I would like either somebody to make a navigation check to cut through the woods and find a path. Otherwise, I'll get everybody to make a group dexterity check, and we'll see how everyone... Goes. I can I can do navigation. I'm. Is anyone else proficient in it that they can help me? Uh, which where is navigation on this new sheet? We have new sheets. It's very exciting. Oh yeah. But... Yeah. There's been an update to Gosh. the uh, Call of Cthulhu Roll Twenty sheets. So check them out. They're very cool. 
very nifty. Uh, I have base navigate, so... I'm quickly looking through my boys, seeing if any of them... <laughs> Check them all out. <laughs> They're there for a oh, reason. Love. God, you're boys. useless. You're all useless. <laughs> you're cannon fodder and nothing else. Why do none of you have navigate? All right, looks like it's a solo roll. Can I uh, make a navigation roll? Absolutely. We're looking for one of these. Web, yeah, easy, nice. Okay, so you you can see that the path takes you know these nice gentle curves around a couple of small hillocks to avoid potentially damaging the carriages. But you are soldiers of the French army. You will march up those hills and down those hills. So you tear off the beaten path and you start to weave through, eventually making your way up towards the Fenelik estate. With that, I'm going to move us over to the Fenelik estate uh, on roll 20, just to have a quick look. Now, um, you are all going to come through at the base of the estate, where a road comes in um, and opens up to this very large garden that heads through into the house itself. There are trees and thick areas all around you, and you know that these forests will provide cover as you head further. Now, currently, you can't see much beyond uh, the road in front of you, but the house is in the distance, I will tell you that much. It just hasn't been quite exposed to you uh, since you haven't uh, gotten uh, that close to it. Um, as you are gathered here, you know that the carriages will be approaching along this road soonish. What is your plan? How are you going to make this approach? Old of you to assume we have a plan? Yeah, well, and now's the time. We, we had a reasonable plan. It was find some guards. So get in, sneak around, find some guards, whack them, take their uniforms, and then possibly send a few of us in as servants. But the step one, scout the grounds and find the guards. Step two, eliminate guards and procure uniforms. Step three, scout the house and find a point of entry. Leave a few of us outside as guards, and then anyone who's dressed as servants might try and go in and have a look on the interior. So, quick question. Step one, scout for guards. Yes. Are we inside yet? Like, this is, no, we, this is this is checking the, the garden. Like the, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what you, I mean. Are we of... even in the garden yet, or are there walls to stop us? Because if so, we might stumble at the first hurdle. Step one, there's the walls. There's going to be guards at the front gate, surely. Um, yeah, there but if will we whack guards... them, that's going to be a bit obvious. So the, the, at, at this stage, there will be the, the um, I've just I've just realized that the map, the map, uh, the map reveals a, a gate just around you. I actually had pictured you a slightly further out. So you will see the walls in the distance. You're actually a little bit further back than you have, you have appeared on the map. The walls will be the first hurdle. Um, you can see some guards at the gate. You can sneak around if you would like to try and scale um, the walls or look for some other point of entry. How many um, guards? There's a few guards. Uh, there are probably about um, three guards standing at the gate. Nothing, exactly. nothing particularly dramatic. We take these guards out. We leave Babin, Beaumont, and Dupois as uh, guards right at the point of entry. I mean, we're pretty, this is a full scale. Uh, now, now we hold the point of entry. That's strategic, right? That sounds important. It's not a bad idea. Is there anyone around apart from those three guards if we were to do some bashing? Uh, no, there does not appear to be. They're waiting for guests to arrive. You can't see anybody else further in. So, yeah, now is the time if you would like to do it. Huh? Like a distraction? Okay, so uh, here would be my plan. Pressy, you are the most distracting at the moment. You move forward. Every The Sorry, five of us... Say, you say attractive? Crouch, I said distracting. <laughs> Oh, the I heard attractive. Us, I, I also heard low attractive, to be honest. And go around the side to get as close as possible. Then Pressy, once they step forward and away from the gate, the five of us swarm them. Also, you have like a pistol underneath your 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 skirt or whatever, uh, and we, we we rush them. I can see no reason not to do this. You have your orders. Everyone else, <laughs> sneak forward, Pressy. You're on point. What kind? What kind right. of distraction Fantastic. did you have in mind? I'm sure. So, Pressy, right, you, you, you just walk up. forward and it'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Alternatively, when in doubt, sing. Yeah. Don't. Um, uh, I guess this time you probably can't sing. <laughs> so, I'll get a stealth check from everybody else in just a moment. But first of all, Pressy, you are at the you, you know you are at the base of this kind of hill where you've taken cover and you're peeking out. You can see the um you can see the gates ahead of you. Um, 
and you're you're you're, you're thinking carefully. Uh, what is your approach going to be? Um, now is a good point to mention. Speaking of weapons, I don't think I have a pistol. I have a musket. We, I think we were allowed to requisition. <laughs> is that a musket but... in your skirt, or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weren't we allowed to requisition weapons? Because ca- um, Captain it's Manon just what said he's, he would give us what whatever he's competent we needed. With. Yeah, uh, Captain Manon would have allowed you to get a hold of a pistol, but uh, do you have any skill with pistols? Base skill in pistol. I've got base skill in pistol, which and uh, thinking of like. 18th century pistols. I imagine they're a little bit more prone to exploding than 1920s pistols. They are. The, the fumble you... range is larger. You can leave the musket with us and we, we can chuck it to you when the fight begins. Very that sort of sounds better. The Caribbean I like that. Esque. I like it. I love I, it. Okay. Locks. This is going to be so cool. I am better at punching people than I am. Actually, we probably shouldn't shoot a whole lot, should we, if we can no, help it? No, probably not. No. Right. Will be. Yeah. That's why we got, your, why we got bayonets. Bashes. Get your bashes. That's why we got yeah. bayonets on the end of our... Uh, the, uh... Silent. the end of your weapons. No, exactly. <laughs> so, you you are heading forward. What's your approach? What are you What are you going to do? Are you Are you going to Are you going to wave at them? Are you going to just head forward and, and and wait for everybody else to strike? I'm thinking like a catwalk, kind of seductive, kind of stalking. To sachet. <laughs> okay. I will sachet. Maybe. I've been known to sachet. Yeah. You can make either a charm or a disguise check as you start to move forward. I mean, did you not just get more charm? Pressy carefully considers what, he, what in, may well be his final act. <laughs> I mean, I'm inclined to sing a sultry song as I am strolling around. The, I've, got, I've got the voice of an angel. I'm going to lure them like the sirens of old. Okay, uh, this will be a hard check, Pressy. Uh, you, you're 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 going to be singing falsetto to start with, um, and uh, you know it's a little it's a little terrifying to be standing you know guard at the gate on one foggy night when through the mist comes. Oh, so uh, yeah, make make your sing check. It's a terrifying is worse what it decision is. than uh, going for the base charm. But that's all right. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm a natural. Hard. <laughs> that's your hard success you were looking for. Hero. That is exactly what I was looking for. My God. Um. So. The rest of you all stack up against the walls and staying low, start to move forward. You're waiting for Pressy to uh, begin the stinging. No, we're waiting, we're waiting for Pressy to appear and begin to talk to them. And then out of nowhere, you hear this romantic song drifting on the wind. Dupois says, my God, uh, is mad. <laughs> Who is um, that charming woman? <laughs> uh, can I get... Ooh, la, la. Uh, I, I would like everybody to make a stealth check. Um, and can I get you to make one for your your compatriots, please, Renault? Roll one for each of them. Yes, please. Can we take bonus dies? Because Pressy's done such a good distracting job. Absolutely, that makes sense to me. Thank you, God. Oh, get... he's good. Uh, two operatives in position. Roger, Roger. Tango for Bowman to take the roll the dice. Keep trying. Oh. That doesn't. Look, that looks important. I'm just gonna roll it twice. Okay. No for old mate. Let's try Dupois. Let's get a lot of the character sheets. Get out of my way. All right. So we've got one fail. Oh come on, mate. You're such a big dice fall. Nope. Two. Oh no, Dupois. Dupois <laughs> is distracted by the singing He's and with seventy babies. in stealth too. <laughs> All right, you know what? These three are getting executed when we get back. <laughs> did all of them fail? They did, yes. Good God, that is just awful. So um, to, that's what you get for dragging fair, though, a bunch of non-player characters into an encounter. You <laughs> did get two hard successes from the two uh, player we did, characters. We did very well. So like, absolutely. So here's what's gonna here's what's gonna happen. Um, the the soldiers kind of hesitate. The hearing the singing, they mutter to them amongst themselves, and they begin to move forward. You are are you heading towards them, um, Pressy, or are you stopping in the fog? Uh, I'm I'm I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm like treading the line. I'm trying to like get get, get their intention without revealing myself. You know what right. I mean? 
just so, like, oh, who is that mysterious, beautiful figure out in the fog? I can't quite like make, make it out. So they can Ooh, there's sort definitely of see something you, there. and, and you've, in, you've, you've piqued their curiosity. So they begin to move forward, uh, the three of them leaving their posts. Um, we'll say one of them because, you, you know, you, you, it was a hard success. And although that was a requirement, I want to give you something a little extra. Leaves their musket, you know, leaning against the wall as they, as they, as they go forward. Um, hmm. The three of them are separated from the gate for a moment. Although just as they start to move, the rest of the group begin darting across the ground. Um, unfortunately, the three at the back are not stealthy enough. And as they begin to move across, one of the soldiers at the side is going to see them and is going to start to yell. But before a single sound can escape his lips, the two of you uh, have already arrived and can both take an action. Effectively, you'll get a full round of surprise before we break out into combat. Oh, very keen. Uh... Uh, what's your what's your dex, Hugel? Uh, my dexterity is sixty. I'm fifty-five. All right. In which Thanks, case, Ryan. Hugel, you are first. Uh, walk up to to the guy who's about to yell and be like, "Hello!" and then punch him in the face. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So he turns, he opens his mouth, and then suddenly you're next to him. Crack. And slug him straight in the face. Make a fighting brawl check. Do you get a bonus okay. dice for, for for sneaking or no? Because is uh, the bonus the is that because this fellow is surprised, he has no option to defend, so he cannot dodge, he cannot repost. You succeeded, so you slug him across the face, uh, and uh, you can roll your damage. I don't know what my damage is for this. Uh, if you if it is an unarmed weapon uh, strike, then it will be uh, it'll be a d three plus one d four. If you have, Eight. if your build yes. is damage bonus. Oh yes, if your build is one, which which uh, actually Hugels may not be. No, it's all over in your combat. Tab. Yes, what yeah. I'm gonna do Shoot. is I'm gonna roll it from my combat sheet, but ignore the like the yeah. dice roll for the Perfect. actual. You've got a bayonet round. if you wanna. Oh no, but your roll is yeah, yeah different roll. <laughs> uh, different well, that's a shame that I can't use that hard success. But uh, damage Dude. two. All right, that, you, you don't have a damage fellow, bonus. Because uh, I'm small. Oh okay. Too small. I am, I am, I think, uh, yeah, my size is 50. Suspiciously small? No, average height. Okay. All uh, right. I think I'm like, I think I'm like, officially, I think I'm the same height I am. <laughs> officially, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. Uh, yeah. A single strike uh, it's, hits this poor soldier uh, across their cheek and they stumble backwards, hands uh, rising up. A second later, Renault is there to follow up. Yeah, I uh, I sneak up behind one, draw my saber, and plunge it into their back. Oh Take hell yeah! Okay, that. make for me make for me a roll, please, a combat roll. Yeah, success and oh, six fantastic. damage. Yeah, no chance. So six damage immediately uh, strikes straight into this poor footman. Um, you see him gasp uh, as the blade uh, sinks into him, and oh, that is just one. Oh wait, no, rounded down. That is enough for a um. That is enough to force him to have to make a constitution check. That is a uh, major wound. So, here we go. Let me force him to make a constitution check. All right. You sink the saber straight into his back. You see his mouth gawp open like a fish, and he collapses to the ground, uh, clutching at his chest, completely out immediately. Sergeant, we need those outfits. (laughs) I thought you were good at disguising. (laughs) <laughs> you can it's hide it here. I never a little blood never ruined a good disguise. Meanwhile, um you are sort of you knew this was coming, Pressy, so I I'm happy to give you a, a surprise round here as well. You are at the back, you have no weapons on you, and you are in a dress. Uh what would you like to do? Uh did we set up uh, that someone was gonna throw me a throw me a a, a musket? When yes, I, but I, it's one of the other three and they're still a little further back. We also don't want loud noises if we can help it. Yeah, that's why I got the bayonet. You could have taken the bayonet off the end of your musket and have, oh. had to have stashed that very easily. Can I do that? It's Absolutely. Not, I can't use my can pull spear skill yeah. then. Is that, does then that become a brawling weapon? Um, That would become a brawling weapon, yes. <gasps> Even better. I'm doing that from now on. Even better. Uh, sure. Um, is, are any of the guards still looking at me? Um, uh, so they've, they've all started to turn except for one who is now face down and the other one who's been punched. So there's one who's kind of not engaged currently. 
Okay. Um, if I think I can close the distance without arousing suspicion, I will sashay up there and uh, stabbing them, or are we just knocking them out? I, 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 did, I didn't catch that. You're going to sashay up there. Are we, uh, are we stabbing them or just knocking them out? I just realized. Uh, you have just we... seen Renault stab one straight through the stomach. Fantastic. All right, that's fine. Uh, yeah, in that case, I will uh, do the same. Okay, please, make your attack. Uh, with a brawl, here it comes. Ooh, Ooh okay. Not a fumble. Shh. Not so good. So you slash out, but unfortunately this person has just seen their companion fall and turned, and purely by luck they manage to avoid a sweep uh, from the strike of your bayonet. They spin back, uh, and um, immediately chaos erupts. So, Oops. Uh, Pressy, what is your dexterity? Uh, 70. If you go into combat now, you can click the init dex one as well. Post it as your initiative. Oh, fantastic. Doesn't Um, roll it? No. If you go under combat, if you click it, it just says like initiative 55. Oh, send my dexterity to the turn tracker. Pretty snappy. Oh, brilliant. Very good. So here's what we're going to do. You have your three other... Uh, companions here and rather than play out each of these individual uh moments yeah. what i'd like to do is the three of them are going to fall upon the one guard that is unengaged that is not engaged um and and begin to struggle with them um and we'll make a role to sort of figure out how well they do but in the meantime i would like the three of you you are you all surround this one guard that hugel has already punched once now they have a dexterity of 55 which means, Pressy, you are going to go before anyone. So they reel back, uh, fumble for their weapons, but you close the distance first. You can make right. another attack if you should. I'm going to have it. I'll have another go. More like it. All right, fantastic. Um, so Get them to sl- death. Slashing with the bayonet. I believe that the bayonet usually does 1d8 damage because it's a, it's a spear, it's a large weapon. You have taken it off the 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 shaft of the actual gun so you are not yep. using it with its full power so let's let's have you roll a d4 plus your damage bonus oh that's 2d4 well pleased with that oh four okay another Perfectly slash average. Over this figure, they've been punched once. They've been slashed across the arm. They stagger off to one side. Can you remind me of your dex, please, Hugo? Uh, it's sixty. Six, sixty. Sixty. In which case, you you are going to go as well. You have you have the advantage here. Uh, you... I would like to, I would like to hit him again. But for for flavor, as he staggers backwards, I would like to sweep his legs out from under him and then clock him in the, like the, the front yeah. of the face with my elbow, like just straight down. Fantastic. Now <laughs> you are worried that this fellow might try to run if he gets away you could use a combat maneuver rather than making a direct attack so you actually could sweep his legs out from under him and he'll fall to the ground effectively you've stopped him from moving you won't be doing Uh, damage but it's a combat maneuver up to you i mean i'm more concerned about him yelling Sure. Okay. Then the run. I am. You can mute him as well. Away. That's kind of it. Yeah, absolutely. You can stand. You could sort of like jump. You jump on his back and you wrap your arms around his head and he can't yell. Okay, that works. Okay, make a fighting brawl check. <laughs> ah, poop. All right, you jump forward um, and you d- land on top of this fellow and you start clawing at his face. Um, and he starts swinging around frantically. He's got a cudgel, which he's managed to produce. And I've just remembered that he absolutely should have um, attempted to uh, repost you previously, uh, Pressy. So he is going to um, he is going to do that. Uh, so first of How all, he's you? going to get a brawl. Uh, and this will be retroactively. This is him attempting to That's uh, fine. block your strike, Pressy. I respect that. That is a success, but it is a matched success, which means that yours, yours will, yours will win. Miguel, like uh, he swings about. So you jump forward, and the cudgel comes crunch, uh, comes landing bonk. against your side. Uh, it is a, it is a heavy hit, um, and you go tumbling sideways. Um, he is going to deal only two damage to you, which could have been up to eight. So it strikes across, just catches you inside, you land uh, on your hands, stumble up. Renault, what is your dexterity? 55. I'm 55, tied which them. means that you are completely equal with this footman. What is your size? Uh, bloody 60. 
60. You are just a little smaller than this fellow, which means you were going to dart in first. You don't have quite as much bulk to move. Okay. Uh, prepare for Sabre, sir. How about you? Actually, don't prepare for Sabre. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't be swing prepared. with your sword. This villain swings with their cudgel. And cling, the blades strike against each other, but yours takes priority. So after parrying once, you swing about, and uh, how, is it, how is it that you strike? I gotta just cut right through it. Okay, it's only, fantastic. It's only a little, little, little cudgel. Go down the thing. Oh, actually, he doesn't have the uh, the hand guard. So I hit the cudgel, then go straight down and through his fingers. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, that is pretty nasty. Um, so another strike uh, lands down. He drops the cudgel, um, yelling. He's on one health, effectively. Um, uh, as a stumbles so... forward, but it is his turn. Um, he will spot the collection of you all surrounding him. He's he's completely unable to do anything, um, and 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 he drops to the ground. He falls to his knees. He raises one hand and kind of holds the other against his chest, and he starts saying, "Civil play, no, leave leave me be, leave me be." Renault, can I please get you to make a fighting brawl check? Uh, pick whichever of your followers has the highest brawl. I believe it would be Dupois, but I may be wrong. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, sure. It, and I'm rolling on theirs. Yes. One moment. Yeah, Dupois looking pretty good. Okay, a hard success. Meanwhile, the other footman is also uh, a hard success. So with that, um, I'll give attacker's advantage again here. And considering that his ally has just surrendered, you are going to be able to order the two to r so surrender. Uh, there is a little bit of yelling and noise, so people may come to investigate soon, um, but no one has been significantly hurt. Um, the man that you have disarmed, uh, you know, he's looking between the three of you, saying, "Saying, w w what do you want? You, 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 you will find the, you will find only death inside. No money for you. The, the, the master of the house, he will, he will not allow you to rob him." We are not highwaymen. We are soldiers of the French army. Undress. <laughs> His eyes like glance across. Uh, the collection of you, and then they fix upon Pressy in a dress, wielding a knife. And he kind of, oh, mon dieu, my god, I, oh, the the army, the uh, I don't I don't want any trouble with the French army. I I I am just doing my job. I, I ah, he holds at his hand. Undress now. Uh, okay, oh, okay. Uh, uh, Saint Jean, maybe you can tell us more about uh, what is happening. He inside. can do it as he is getting changed. I point to the uh, Dupois and the other two, and so get changed into the uniforms and clean up as much of the blood as you can. You'll be stationed here for the rest of the night, and then we can question them as they're as they're um, getting changed. It takes only a few minutes to get your three companions dressed in the clothes. Dupois has like a large blossoming blood stain in the middle of him, but he pulls his jacket around him tight to hide it. Um, the three so the three foot footmen now shivering, sort of move over to the side and are looking uh, it, between one themselves. One of them definitely dead. One of them, uh, one, one of them is in the neck. <laughs> like, yeah, one, one of them is unconscious. Great. Technically, they are still alive. They have a major wound and collapsed. Um, so they've been moved over. They're groaning and kind of occasionally. Uh, so the others are standing over him and. Uh, but he is alive mechanically. He's not in a good way, but you know, so, he's not so, dead. Sergeant, should we uh, attend to these men or leave them as is? Give them some bandages. They can occupy themselves with tending to their comrade. Uh, can we? Can we leave? Can we take him to Poissy? Uh, it, it was a it was a decent little walk into Poissy, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like like. That'll Best take them case, some time. It's going to take them forty-five minutes. Yeah, that's all right with me. Um, I, I don't have an issue with them going. Um, can, can I attempt to stabilize the one that is currently dying? Sure, he's not currently dying okay. mechanically. I will say he, but you can attempt to. You could attempt to get him back on his feet enough to sort of limp uh, back to safety. Would you like to make a first aid check? Well, if uh, only if my sergeant says it's okay. Go ahead. Sweet. No, cannot. Uh, unfortunately, well, like you've got bandages and and you're kind of getting over it as you see this like hole through this man. You're like, this is not a bandages situation. Mm. This is a he gets to a to a surgeon real quick. Um, uh, the others are pretty keen to leave now. Uh, do you have any questions you want to ask them before? 
before they go, before you go. Um, I'm pretty focused on getting inside, so I'm re-securing my, my saber and stuff and having a look at the entrance and plotting my way through. If you guys want to ask them any questions, go ahead. Uh, uh, we, uh, what were your orders tonight? How, how do you know who to let in? They, they are, they arrive in carriages, big, big carriages. They're, they're nobles, the aristocrats. No one is, no one is allowed in who is not one of them. Um, no invitations. Invitations. There are invitations, but the count, uh, the count says, if if people arrive without invitations, then well, it can be even more fun to allow them to enter too. See. Mm. Uh, well done. What are your names? Our names. Uh, they glance between. They will give you names. Uh, they are Jacques. <laughs> they are Danielle, and they are Olivier. Wonderful. Great. We have the names of the people that are meant to be on the gate. Uh, who is the main, um, the, who is the head person for the kitchen and the head person for the wait stuff? The, uh, they the give husband. you their names too. Great. <laughs> Essentially, if we need to like go, I'm terribly sorry, but such and such said we were, we're meant to be over here. We now have names that we can do that with. Sure. No, good, good idea. Good idea. Fantastic. So that'll be a bonus die on fast talk checks to try and bluff your way through, um, through, you know, kind of mm. interrogation, assuming you drop the names. So with the interrogation finished, uh, the three... I guess, hang on, sorry. I, I guess we, we are intending to, like, resolve this tonight. I, I guess we'll say, um, your master, your master's comeuppance is tonight for his sins. He will be, uh, returned to the court of France. Do you wish to distance yourself from him? Have you any secrets? Or um, what are his affairs that you can you can tell us, and uh, the courts may look more kindly on you. Uh, make an intimidate check for me as you as you attempt to sort of scare them into revealing any secrets they have. Now I will say quickly, resolve this tonight. Your mission by Malon was to get in here and to get definitive Find evidence. Information. It yeah, was not to same. attempt an arrest. Yes, sorry, that is true. It was to what? Sorry. It was to get defin- like get proof, get right. definitive yeah, yeah, proof. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but That's they right. don't That's need right. to know that. And this is part of proof, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or at least proof of it. what? Just bad no, stuff? No, like, Dodgy if get, nonsense. If we can get some info. The tie, tie into um, the printing press murders, presumably. Yes. So yes. at this stage, uh, Renault, they are scared of you, but they're the kind of scared where they're just going to clam up and, and be yeah, like, oh, no, we're fine. Yeah. We're let us go. Let us go. Um, uh, you can try and push this if you would like. Um, oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, actually, but what what's the what are the terms? Look, there's only one way you're going to get people like this to talk. You have seen these kind of brigands before. That one is already close to death. He won't make it to Poissy. Demonstrate your point. Put him out of his misery, and the other two will speak. I think I'm good. Thank you, though. All right. In which no case, unnecessary murder. <laughs> in which case, the two of them grab at the body. They begin to lug it away, um, you know, muttering to themselves, shivering, uh, moving off into the cold night. It's not going to be a lovely trip for them, but they should make it to Poissy. You turn back towards the other three companions who have now um, put on their, uh, uh, you know, their affairs. Baba has gotten out um, a small notebook, which is balancing against his arm and is saying, uh, we will take the names of all of the aristocrats who come in. We can, we can learn every, everybody. It's, this is an excellent idea, sir, uh, Sergeant. Yes, my idea. Very good. Um, all right. Uh, open the gates and let us through. The gates are opened. You bypass the wall and you begin to move through. In the distance, you can see the beginning of these carriages start to approach. So you know you don't have a wealth of time as you begin to move up along the um, along the uh, pathway uh, towards the house itself. Now here, you're getting close enough that you're able to see things a little bit better. Fenelik's house is this intense mismatch of all these weird architectural styles. There's some like classical Greek columns. There's what look like, you know, medieval inspired Gothic towers, something like a, like a, like a ruin or something like that. Um, there's, it, it's all these weird complete mismatch of different cultures different time periods um it would have been incredibly expensive to 
to build and it is incredibly disconcerting just to look at. You can see there is a beautiful garden and there are statues dotted about uh, behind the house itself. There are also wonderful plants spread around, but there's also kind of thick thorned plants, these darker, more hostile, uh, you know, bushes and trees. It, 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 it's a place that is beautiful. It is definitely a noble person's house, but it is also a place that makes you immediately feel uncomfortable. The degree to which the house off, is off-putting is such that you all need to make a sanity check upon seeing it. Okay. Well, now. The roof line is not straight. Um, it looks like it's going to fall apart at any moment, but it is at the same time imposing. Okay, yeah. So it's a house, and you you could you've it's seen house. houses that are going to fall down. You're I all able like to. This uh, is very much just like uh, this man has incredibly gaudy tastes, and he's not very architecturally minded. Uh, he does it that. Um, so you can see the house. You can also see the garden, which has a collection of statues in it, as I've mentioned before. You can only see one of them uh, right at the, uh, which, which is at the, which is at the sort of closest to the house. Um, specifically, uh, it is a statue of, uh, just get, get the exact wording of it, because it is quite, it is quite inflammatory. It is, um, the Madonna holding her child, gazing down in like this adoration. But can I get you all to make a spot hidden check? All of us. Yep, go ahead. Hey, oh, there. You can see it. Do I want to see it? Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you, it's there. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, <Extreme>. you. you... <laughs> Sorry, it's I. Extreme I wanted... viewing. I wanted to confirm my own knowledge, so I just quickly googled Madonna, and I of course got the <laughs> singer-songwriter. <laughs> yep, I was like, ah, yep. <laughs> of course. Um, so the statue of the Madonna and Child, uh, which is just just sort of further up, um, where that first star is on the um, on the map that you all can see. Um, it is the 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 figure looks adoring at first, looks wonderful, looks kind, but. In reality, you can see two sharp stone fangs coming out of her mouth, and she appears to be about to bite the baby. Mm. Ooh. Mm. You can see other statues further in. Um, just that statue would probably get you charged with blasphemy. Which uh, Pressy certainly knows. Having yeah, absolutely. This is up in the church. Yeah, this could get you prosecuted. Just, just that statue. Yikes. Okay. Okay. You can head towards the house. Yes. Um, well, I mean, we, we have our evidence. We can get him on charges of blasphemy at, at the very least. If this is what he keeps in the garden, imagine what he keeps in the home. Let's look a little closer. Um, are there more guards we can actively see patrolling the, the area, James? Or did it seem to be mainly the gates? It seemed, you can see a few further in patrolling, but there's not active patrols. It looks like most of them are inside the house because the events of the night are just starting to begin. Speaking of which, behind you, the first of the carriages start to roll in. Okay. Um, so the collection of you will want to get off the path, get into the garden or head towards the house in some way or another. You won't want to be seen when the carriages start arriving. And the lights are on in the house. Like it's happening. Yes, yes. It, you can it, see movement like... and activity about inside. Okay. Here would be my suggestion. One of us goes and has a look through the garden to see what else there is, and the other pair of us will begin to search the perimeter of the house. Let's meet in the northern section near the statue of Madonna um, and Child, and then we can plan our next move. Does that sound good? You are in charge, Sergeant. I am, but these are unusual times. I would value your input. Maybe. I, I don't... To Christ's point, I don't think that a blasphemy statue is enough to have him charged for anything, given that there is a large number of aristocrats that visit him on the regular who do not seem to care at all yeah. that there are blasphemy statues. I think we need something a little more impressive. And let's just add it to the list. Let's just start a list. Pressy, Anyone? you will recognize any religious artifacts the best. Do you want to go and have you a look in the garden? Hugel and I will get the perimeter ah. of the house. Yes, yes, it would be good to see if there are any other statues of a similar nature. 
Okay, sounds like we have a plan right, then. Fantastic. So we will meet back in the north near the statue of Madonna in 20 minutes or so. Is Sound good? the statue of Madonna like the one directly in front of us, which is like south of the house? It's to the north of the yep. house. I mean, it's. But it's... there's enough. There is enough oh. cover there that you'd be able to like. There, there's 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 plants. That's like we're in the garden. That one and the garden's not lit currently, right? Whereas like inside the house, it's lit yep. and kicking off. It'd be pretty hard to look out there unless they're searching that region. Would be my. Uh, okay, so Hugel and Renault are going to get the perimeter of the house, and to be clear, you're going to get the perimeter of the house, not of the grounds themselves. Correct. That's right. We're looking for a way in that isn't okay. the front door. Okay, fantastic. So you're going to head over to here, and you're going to be, begin to start searching around the house. Meanwhile, Pressy, you are going to move through the entirety uh, of the gardens bit by bit um, and start searching them. You will. So first of all, um, let's start with Pressy. Um, you are going to see a, a, a collection of other statues, but you're also going to see that there is a single lone footman who is patrolling around uh, the, the, the garden. Um, can I get you to make a stealth check to try and evade them? Otherwise, you could try and fast talk them, convince them that they need to go somewhere. Whatever plan you would work. Seeing is probably not the way to go here. Uh, I will, at first, try to avoid them with stealth. All right, fantastic. Um, make a stealth check for me. Found. Okay. Um, uh, so you, yeah. you, are, you are darting about in the bushes um, and you're attempting to sort of um, stay as hidden as possible. But unfortunately, this footman hears you as your foot uh, cracks against, you know, some, some stop foliage and they begin to turn around. Um, you could throw yourself forward, pushing the roll, <laughs> um, but it would be very clear that you're like hiding at this stage. Um, or you could immediately wave and try and get their attention if you'd like to try something else. I lost track. Presumably I'm wearing the guard's clothes we took and I'm not still no. in the dress. No, the, no the you're still in the dress. With the three that we left at the gate. You're still well, in the dress. Well, okay. You made your dress. Now it's time to wear it in, in it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I will uh, throw myself forward in a fainting fit. Um, I've, uh, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a touch of the nerves. And uh, my my weak womanly con, uh, con constitution has failed me during my trip around the garden, and I need a strong, strapping young lad to uh, come and whisk me away. Come with okay, fantastic. Distance. <laughs> so this soldier sees you, walks forward, and says, "Hey!" And then at that point, you swoon. Make a fast talk check. Fast talk. All right. Uh, can I swoon charmingly? Uh, not, not really here, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm looking for fast talk, not charm. Yeah. All right. So you, you like swoon, <laughs> and, he, and he, he he hurries over in concern. But um, as you land, sort of on the ground, you 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 hear the sound of your bayonet, which you st stashed uh, in your dress, clank loudly. And he looks down. He can see the shape of the bayonet, or at least the shape of something pressed against your dress. He frowns and he fumbles for his cudgel. And I have been saying, stabbed. Uh, he, he's, uh, he, he's, he's definitely put on alert and he'll start saying, well, what's going on? What are you doing here? Uh, I... We'll jump back to that in a second, but first <laughs> let's talk about uh, Renault and Hugel. So Renault and Hugel, the two of you get around to the house and you start darting around the outside, taking in um, the various rooms. You can see that there are large windows, so it's actually pretty easy to see inside. Um, and as you start to explore, uh, I want you both to make a spot hidden check. Okay, uh, Hugel, you're, you're glancing through and you're not seeing anything particularly weird. Um, you give a wide berth to the area out the front where there are some, there are some servants that are gathering, which you can kind of get an angle on it through one of the windows towards the side. And you start to look in house by house, uh, sorry, room by room rather. Um, there's food this set up. This house is on. made of multiple houses. Oh, That's I mean, what it we practically missed. is. It's a, it's a manor. Um, you can see these, you know, tables laid out with food. You can see a ballroom. It's all very beautiful. It's all very fancy. Renault, you, you freeze because as you're coming through, Hugo keeps going around. You peek through to what looks like a foyer, and you catch a glimpse, just a glimpse, of some of the servants towards the front are opening doors and moving through, of a very grisly sight. Right inside the doorway, looming over the front, there is a corpse. It looks like a like an old sort of petrified 
mummy or something like that a, a body that is shriveled up and husked and it is dressed in the flowing ornate robes of the pope on its hand is an enormous cardinal's ring um, and it stands there suspended uh, in, in a grisly kind of uh, shrine-like situation. More blasphemy. This the kind that would get you immediately beheaded. Oh yeah, he's got, sorry, he's got a mummified corpse dressed up as the Pope suspended in his like in his, in his In his front room, as if it's Man, something that, that you would go in and walk And suspended past. like it's hung up. Um, it, it's it's been it's been made to stand. So there's probably like a single like rope that's stopping it from falling. But in general, it would have stands behind it that are sort of keeping it above. And its hand is stuck out where a large cardinal's ring is on the front. I presume I'm doing a sanity test. Absolutely, you are. And can I ask, as as I roll, does this seem to be? Is this like mock reverence? Like I've taken oh, this thing, or is it like complete blasphemy? Like it's hung up and like it's kind of taking the piss. Like it's making the Pope look poorly and and and, and weak. Um, or is it like, oh, look I'll, at this I'll, big important figure? I'll get you to make a a credit rating or an occult check. Either of those. Okay. Um, not great on occult. I think I think it seems like a cult though. I'll do a cult. Okay, you've passed the sanity, so you you are feeling um you are feeling, to you Not know great. together. Spotting this doesn't immediately set you. The, uh, look, at this stage, you know, just considering this question is enough for your like your 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 good Catholic mind to go no 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 stop thinking it's blasphemy burn it kind of um you know this is this is not something that anyone should have uh, regardless of how it is being displayed. Who cares? It is it is what it is, and what it is is blasphemy. As the collection of you are creeping around the outside of the house, though, you come around to the northern side, um, so just towards here, next to the statue of the Madonna, um, and you will see uh, Pressy um, off towards one side, you, the shape of where you know he is, and you'll start to hear the yelling as the guard confronts him. Oh, yeah. Back over to Pressy. Um, in front of you, this guard uh, grabs their cudgel and raises it out. They say, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Why aren't you inside? Who, who are you? I... I haven't seen you before. I have been stabbed. Been stabbed? What? They are dead. I don't know. Um, make another fast talk check. This is pushed. Not going uh, well. If you fail this, he will know. Like you, you are you are clearly like trying to to bluff him out, and he will he will you know assume that you have malicious intent. His eyes. Sorry, I rolled narrow. before you finished speaking because I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Drop that weapon. Drop it now. Do you do so? Lunge at him. No, I'll try to stab him. Ugh. All right, he's holding out the cudgel towards you, and Pressy, you grit your teeth, and then you move like lightning, heading in really quickly. So the two of you, Hugel and Renault, you both hear the sounds of uh, combat. Um, can I get you both to make a dexterity check to see how quickly you'll be able to get over there? Assuming, of course, that you're both going to race over. Uh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Wait, wait, if the sergeant does. Rude. All right. Not that much of that. You're on your own, mate. Good luck. <laughs> so they're a little slow, starts staggering through the garden, and Pressy, you are caught in, in combat with this man. Um, you both start at the same time. You have a higher dexterity than him, so make a make your take take your first action. Uh, brawl seven. All right. Oh, oh you're done now, man. Oh my god. Okay. Well, he 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 is a tough footman. Who isn't worried about someone in a dress? So he attempts to repost you, which means he cannot possibly succeed unless he rolls a one. He does not. It was a good hit, so he swings, but good. you duck low and uh ram up with your bayonet. Twelve points of damage as you sink what? uh the weapon straight into his stomach. Also, probably 12. impaling. Where's oh, sorry. I read the extreme. I read the extreme, not the uh, points of damage. No. So this will be. Uh, so your bayonet is a, a D4 plus your your damage bonus D4. So it's eight points of damage. There we uh, are. Still well and, and truly you... enough. And impaling because it's a, a knife. Oh so God, you're again. right. So twelve damage. Yes. Uh, D8, or is it eight plus D4? Yeah. Eight, eight plus a D4. Yes. All right. Three. Roll a four. Three. Oh, it's enough. Not bad. Sinks into his stomach. Oh, that's a good day. 
oh, he grabs at it and and you know the the, the blade is embedded right in, in his gut Wait, and you see his up. eyes bulge red extreme fumbles success. with his cudgel and he's holding onto the weapon so you can't really get get out and he swings wildly with the cudgel would you like he's to make still- a Brawl he, or in dodge check? Still he's still standing. He's still standing. He's still standing. He made his constitution check. He succeeded. Just hit with the blade a bit more. Um. Uh, should I brawl? Or should I repost or dodge? Repost, repost. I got better chance dodging, but I think yeah, if he's I repost, on the I might take him out. He's on the ropes. I'm gonna try to repost. All right. I. Uh, like this. Oh, I got him. And you jerk up with the weapon. Uh, I got you, you him. Can, Deal another D4, uh, 2D4 two, two damage. Got him. Roll 2D4. Another 2. All right. Uh, he didn't have that much health remaining. That is enough to take him out. So you've stabbed him. He swings. You just pull on the weapon, you know, very hard, and you hear like a click inside him as if you've turned off a machine. He kind of gurgles. He slides backwards off and lands on the ground with his arms outspread just as your companions arrive in the middle and you're holding this bayonet. Has Pressy ever killed anyone before? Not like this. Not, Not like in a this? dress. <laughs> All right. Make a sanity Probably check. should have told him I was a soldier. Give it in the chance to surrender. I just panicked. Make a, make a sanity check for me. I'll be fine. All right, uh, you hold yourself together. What what justification? You know, what, why why is Pressy able to 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 not be disturbed by having killed someone? Just following orders. Just following, following orders. orders. All right. Um, the two of you arrive. This body is now sprawled out. You're in the middle of the garden, so you can see around you um, the other statues. I will describe them in a second. But first of all, what is your immediate reaction, each of you? Uh, body in the bushes. No. Weak. All right. Grab the body and uh, shift it over, uh, slamming it down into the bushes. Um, I see. Was there was there just the one guard? It's one that I saw. We okay. Well, then we have a moment. We should continue and get out of here as quickly as we can. Already, I have seen mm, dark things inside the house. I think the closer we look, the worse it will appear. Do we wish to continue, Sergeant, or oh, is this enough? This is something, but everything we've seen so far, the statues people have seen before, and that thing in the foyer, I don't think they could move it easily, but it could be... in the foyer? Um, I tug at my shirt. There is a perversion of the Pope, dressed in robes and mummified. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a, a dark thing, but still no guests have arrived, and I want to see what they get up to. I want to know what this event is and what they are doing before we retreat. We have I... disarmed and now killed a guard. They will know someone was here tonight. We need irrevocable proof. We need something concrete that we can take to the captain and that they can act upon. Well, whatever Maybe are these we statues? find in... At this point, I'm going to describe the other statues because you're standing in it, and you you've got that memory of the the the, the perversion of the Pope, um, kind of drilled into your head, Renault. And as you glance around, each of you, you can see the other four statues. Um, there is a statue of Icarus, except um, instead of beautiful feathered wings, they are enormous, demented bat wings, and there is a crazed look in the eyes of the statue. There's a statue of Cupid biting the neck of Psyche. Um, and there is a statue of Death, uh, the, the the Grim Reaper, except instead of dressed in robes, they are dressed with a powdered wig and in the fashion of the day, and they are extending their hand as if to dance. It's not a good look. Um, nothing tasteful, but nothing blasphemous out here. Pretty sure these are all blasphemous in some way, shape, or form. They may not be the god, but they were once gods, and that is enough. How how common is, like, the myth of Icarus to us? Uh, like, that's pretty niche, is isn't it? Is that after French... the Renaissance. This is after the Renaissance, when everyone so. got back into the classics again. So okay, I think is it? All right. Yeah, yeah it's... it's you, you would know it. You would know it. Uh, but it is, it is um, you know, something of, you know, 
you know, of, of, of your, you've all been educated effectively. So, so that that is why you know. What was the what was the description of the Cupid one again? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it is Cupid biting the neck of Psyche. So Cupid and Madonna are both kind of bitey. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, look, we, I, it's he's a vampire, like. Bat wings, fangs, lot of lot of blood. He's a fucking vampire. If it I'm looks gonna, like I'm a vampire. Call it... If it smells it... like a vampire. <laughs> if it dislikes garlic and doesn't like running water, and if you throw salt at it, it runs away. It's a fucking vampire. We should bring some salt. Well, I guess that's now, the... what are the myths at the time of vampires? Exactly. What would our that's a really know? good point because mm. none of you, as investigators, have a conception of what a vampire is. The myth of the vampire has not permeated, um, you know, the, the, the cultural Byron. awareness of, of society in, in, in the 1780s. I'm pretty sure Byron was like 19th, 18th or 19th century, and the, there was the, like one the, person yeah. prior to that. There, there is, there is one fiction. in the 1890s, which was, a, which was written, it was, it was a, um, I think, I'm forgetting the name of the, the book, but that is considered to be the earliest vampiric That's... canon. So you are about 100 years short. The original book, I think, is Vampire, like uh, with a Y. Uh, I, think I think there is. The I one. think there is a book that was written beforehand that is now considered to be a, va a vampiric book. I think it's quite. I'll, 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 I'll Either I'll way, it's it. definitely uh, the we vampire. are not in like a. It's a common myth or like popular culture thing at this point, right? Like this is. We, we don't know what this is, even if no. it is. Byron's vampire was from eighteen nineteen. There you go. There you go. All right. And looking right above me, uh, 1789. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're stuffed. So a bit out. A little, little bit away. We've well, got an idea for a book, guys. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Okay. We don't know what a vampire is, but I, Art, as a player, fucking called it. All and right. I'm going right. to, if it turns out to be this, I want to know. So as the, you, you all move the body, you have a quick look at the statues around, you have a discussion. By now, guests have started to pour inside. Okay, that's good. Um, and there are these carriages arriving. There are, there are uh, outside, there's a huge collection of like um, drivers and, and, and servants who are like sort of hanging around the carriages, milling about and talking. And inside, the celebrations are beginning. From your vantage point in the gardens, you can all see um, that the... The figure of the Pope is still there. And whenever a new guest arrives, um, the soldiers who are standing at the door stop them and gesture. And some of them immediately, some of them with a bit of prodding, kneel and kiss the ring of the corpse. Oh, ew, the Pope? Ending. Yeah, as would be tradition if you met the Pope. This, this is no Pope. This is not. And they seem to be going along with this. Uh, some you, you only see one person who kind of is like no and and then the foot soldiers kind of get a bit close to them and they acquiesce hmm. if this is the beginning of the night things are only going to get darker we need to see what they do let's stay here but I would suggest we split up and cover different angles into the house um because from here we can like you know we're, we're getting one angle through windows but it's a big property right like they could be in a shitload of room so if we split up and, and all look in we'll have a better chance let us decide now that if things we all carry a pistol or something if things are bad fire a gunshot is not the the signal to fight but to flee if we hear a gunshot everyone makes for the exits we grab the remaining three and we get out okay Fantastic. There's like, because like, there's like a significant number of guards, right? Like, this is not like a last stand. Like, this is like, if no, they no, find no. There us, are a lot of guards inside. Yeah. It, it would be, I mean, you, you'd want to, if you were assaulting this, you'd want to get the other three. You'd have wanted cannon. to grab one of the cannons from the Bastille. It's, uh, it'd be a, it'd be an endeavor. Okay. So right. let's then, uh, let's, let's have a quick discussion about how, what your approach is going to be towards the house. The front area that is connected to the road, that is now uh, bustling. It is busy. Um, can I safely assume that one of you is going to stay at the top, one of you is going to stay at the bottom, and one of you will come around the back of the house? Sounds good. All right. Fantastic. Any preferences, or shall I place you as you land? Uh, I would like to try and get in wherever servants are moving in now. I think I have the best, the best chance being persuasive and or sneaky. <laughs> 
Okay, fantastic. Um, so you are hanging around that area at the moment. You can actually try and sneak inside if you would like, um, but that will take either a stealth or a disguise test. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um... Are you are you going to try and go in? I mean, I, that is the that is the intent I get from what we're doing is we need to get inside. So, all right. Yes, I will go ahead and make a stealth roll for this to try and currently not be seen. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> make said stealth roll. Ooh, fantastic! An extreme success. Very nice. I am invisible. <laughs> With that, and a few of those this session to Fenelik's Manor, where we will uh, begin to learn some of the terrible things. That are awaiting. Can we not? Inside. Can we? Can we not learn about? I feel like Best I feel like my don't. sanity is gonna suffer, just a, just a tiny bit if I learn. If we have. Mm. Um, <laughs> so. Sorry, um, someone in chat just said channeling monkey again. I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Um, so. Hugel, you basically make your way through the coach court and up to the uh, side doors to the house where people are basically, um, uh, you know, bustling in and out uh, one by one and um, occasionally carrying, you know, trays of food or moving out towards the gardens or bringing out supplies for the drivers. Um, they are... Uh, you know, it, it, they seem relatively normal, all things considered. They are perfect, ignoring what is happening uh, inside the mansion at a whole, uh, at, at, you know, uh, all of the weird stuff that is happening at the front. Now, meanwhile, um, the two of you, I think, are going to head towards, first of all, I think, Renault, you're going you're gonna to be around the side, and I'm going to have you peeking into the, uh, to the ballroom. Sounds good. Uh, just here. Just a moment to adjust the lighting so that you can you can see inside. And meanwhile, uh, Pressy, you are going to be snuck right up here, and you are going to be gazing into a dining room. Once again, bon. Moment. Très bon. Très bon indeed. There's nothing bon about this. <laughs> this is very anti-bon. Hey, Ow. it's perfectly bomb. Sorry, no. I just had a trouble removing this. Um, Do you want me to get it? The the bon Here we go. I don't, I don't know French grammar, but I think it's that. So, um, as you sneak through uh, the rear entrance to the manor, um, uh, Hugel, you are peeking inside, Pressy, and you uh, suddenly are aware of a strange gathering of people that are just inside uh, the main room. They are engaged in some kind of utterly bizarre activity. Along this huge table where a group of, um, you know, where, where beautiful food has been laid out and there are a collection of, um, you know, uh, uh, seats as if people would be gathered together to uh, in, in, to, to dine. Um, all of the aristocrats are standing and they are watching a spectacle. On the table is a, a, a man uh, dressed as Marie Antoinette. He is in a dress uh, like yourself, um, uh, but his is much finer. And, 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 you know, there is lace and there are pieces, you know, it, it is elaborate and it is detailed and it is wonderful. Um, uh, and behind him, uh, there is, uh, there is a woman who is dressed as the king. Um, uh, you know, a, a large kind of, um, fluffy collar and, uh, you know, robes and jackets, uh, put over and he, and she is holding a large riding crop and she is beating, uh, Marie Antoinette and everybody is uproariously laughing. Uh, they are finding this to be the most hilarious thing that they have ever seen. Um, this is com what Pressy's reaction to this. This is completely shocking. I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> it's not so funny to you. All right. Um, meanwhile, uh, towards your side of the of the mansion, um, 
uh, Renault, you are gazing through and you can see these other ornate rooms, these sitting rooms, the same ones that you scanned by uh, just beforehand. Uh, but as you're moving, um, you see what looks like a kind of a, a, a shimmer towards one side. Can I get you to make a spot hidden check? Yeah. All right. Um, your eyes track the shimmer and you, you feel like for a second, uh, you see what looks like some mist drifting around a corner. You follow it with your eye and then you can see a tall, proud figure. You know, it, you lose sight of it for a second as it goes around a corner. And when where the mist would be re-emerges, you see Comte Fenleek dressed elegantly, beautifully, moving and heading towards uh, the dining room where you know that uh, Pressy is watching around the corner. So he came from the ballroom which i'm looking into and went yes and where did it seem like he came from before then um it looks like he's sort of been strolling about the house sort of strutting 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 his Reefed stuff in he, he doesn't take a sorry wreathed in mist uh so what you do is you see you 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 peek in you see mist and you go what is that and then it goes around a corner and when you see it again it is Kant Fenleek. as you continue to watch you will see Fenleek literally kind of strutting around the house. He doesn't take a direct path to the to the dining room. He walks through, he walks bit by bit. And as you continue to watch him for successful spot hidden check, you will see for a moment, you know, he heads behind a pillar and then there is a cat walking past. And then he heads behind a pillar and then it's Fenleek again. I will need you to make a sanity check. Seems unlikely. This is some okay. nonsense. With a hard success, uh, you will lose a single point of sanity. Okay, All the fair. same. Uh, it, you are not seeing a direct transformation of a person oh, yeah, into another, think, yeah. but it is as close to as you would. That would be insane. All right. James. Okay. At the back of the home, uh, Hugel, uh, what is your itinerary? Where will you be going? Uh, looking at the map. I'm in the coach area? Yeah, so you are where the coaches have all been brought in and you're darting through and you can see the, the doors right in front of you. Uh, this is the area that... Um, this, this, this is where the, the, um, the servants are coming in and out of. Is, is Fenleek's carriage here? Uh, Fenleek's carriage would be here, yes. Well then, I think the first order of business is getting a look inside that carriage. Okay, fantastic. Um, you uh, sidle over to carriage. Now, there are people about, um, but with your extreme success... Yeah, I was going to say, you I are, will remind you, I'm invisible. <laughs> you, are completely, you are completely unknown, and you, uh, you move forward towards the back of the, um, the carriages. You creep up, and you start to take a proper look inside. What exactly are you looking for, um, just before I'm you jump in? I guess because I knew I know that the handkerchief came from the carriage, like it fell out. There might be other such items that link Fenleek to the royal, like the royal family. Other such things that would support the case of like this man is eating Marie Antoinette and thinks it's funny. Uh, that, kind of, that kind of totally, totally. So just anything that would. Essentially, I'm looking for evidence. Yeah, make a, make a spot hidden check. Okay. Thank you. Oh my god, fantastic. You are in several extremes today. All right. Um, you open the, uh, the latch to one of the uh, doors of the carriage and you slip inside. It's not locked or anything like that. You start to glance about. Now, this carriage is unfortunately relatively standard it's creepy you go you comb through it in detail but there is nothing that stands out there is no collection of you know evil plans inside and there is no evidence that you can see that said when you get down and you're sort of creeping along and looking on the floor of the carriage you will see that there are drops little droplets of dried blood that have not been properly cleaned that are sitting on the floor that is disconcerting Okay, well, if there's nothing useful in the carriage outside of the knowledge that maybe there is blood in the carriage, which maybe ties... It is hard to prove that this is enough to be like, this man definitely murdered a family of people and there's blood everywhere. Um, it's, it's evidence. I will make notes and then I will... Um, 
I will start to move in the direction of where all of the servants are to try and get inside into like, because what I know of old houses or like uh, anywhere where servants did a lot of being is that there were often servants uh, passages mm -hmm. that only servants generally took to get to and from places in, unseen so they didn't disturb guests. Um, and so, like, being able to find my way around the house into important areas using those pathways that are not going to be where aristocrats are. Sure, sure, that makes sense. So you you start to follow towards the servants. Um, as you're stepping into the house, uh, we're going to jump back across to Pressy. Uh, because Pressy, as you are peering in through the window, um, scanning at these people, uh, making a, a scene of themselves, Fenleek is going to come around and he is going to burst through the double doors. Um... Are you still watching Fenleek, Renault? If I have a... I don't think I have a view on the... You, are, uh, you could have been Razor. scanning along, so you would have been going along the sitting room, you would have been moving towards the Grand Foyer. Uh, you're sort of uh, looping about. To, in that case, if it looks side. like everything's gathering in this point, I'll join Pressy. Okay. Um, so you come through uh, to, just next to Pressy um, and uh, take a glance at what's inside. Um, that does mean that as you are moving along uh, through the, 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 the window just beforehand, you will see Fenleek approach the doors and you will see definitive evidence at last of something truly sinister. As he approaches the doors, he waves his hand and they burst open. Um, from, the, from all the people inside, it would have looked like he just came through them. But yeah. you spot the truth. Shit. Uh, make another sanity check. Shit, 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 shit. Don't hit it. Okay, it's success. Uh, just success. as just a single point of sanity. The the ancient Romans Death figured out how to make the ancient Romans figured out how to make automatic doors for their temples, anyway. just for the theatricality. So I'm not an ancient. I'd probably be, I'd probably be shocked by that as well. To be fair. <laughs> All right then. Um, as uh, Fenleek steps inside. Um, all of the party stops and the, the people on the table kind of like freeze. Uh, the, the, the man dressed as Mary Antoinette is kind of laughing. Um, the, the, the woman dressed as the king has, has stopped. Um, uh, Fenleek steps forward and he looks from one of them to the other. In the silence, he smiles and he says, oh, Mes amours, my loves. He looks towards the woman dressed as the king and says, Continue. She starts to strike again, um, and then he says, harder. And the, the man is kind of laughing a little more, and then Fenleek says, harder. And she starts to beat him properly now. This continues until the man has stopped laughing, and he is screaming, and she is um, uh, beating, at him, beating him with this riding crop. Um, eventually, Fenleek moves forward, and he kicks the body off the table and he gestures towards the surrounding aristocrats who swarm forward and they begin beating this man, kicking at him um, and, and just uh, absolutely assaulting him. Um, Fenleek watches and he has this smile on his face and his eyes are huge and dark. Um, everyone watching, which is the two of you at the bottom, have to make a sanity check. Damn. Okay. Is that... Is that, uh, that is you two and I. Moi? Say moi? Keep closing my character sheet for reasons unknown. There we go. Um, we're, we're pretty good at this. I feel like they picked the right soul just for the job. Oh, this absolutely. Is, or the big guns. <laughs> you're not bothering us. So you two watch in stunned silence. Um, while meanwhile, Hugel, um, you have made your way into the, the house and the servants are kind of gone. You sort of have a uh, free run of the place for a couple of moments. You've moved through uh, into this kind of servants um, area. You can see staircases that head up to the higher floor. You can hear the noise coming from uh, the dining room just nearby. Um, you know, to one side of you, uh, there is a kitchen. Um, to the other side of you, as you were scanning the house previously, you would have been to able to identify a ballroom. Um, where would you like to go? What is your plan? Not, 
I'm not entirely sure. We're looking for evidence. Evidence, exactly. Which makes me think I'm probably looking for some kind of study or some place where Fenric plans or thinks or does. So if there's nothing like this on this floor, I will go up or down as necessary. Okay, you head towards uh, the staircases and you can see a, a set of the stairs can lead you up or they can lead you down. Uh, it is it is up to you which direction you would like to go. Oh. Investigator brain says down, monkey brain says up. <laughs> <laughs> like, as in human monkey brain, when yes. things are scary, we're like, up, up, up is definitely the pl No, it's really not, because then you won't know where to go. Um... I'm going to go down briefly to see what is there, and if nothing immediately catches my attention, I will then go up to the second floor to see if there's any, like, bedrooms, that kind of thing. So okay, fantastic. It's, it's um, a, like, what's down here? Nope. If, all right. If there's nothing immediately interesting. You start to head down uh, the stairs, and they head down, down, oh, down. Um, and the walls begin to become rough and hewn towards the sides, and suddenly you are descending into the bowels of the earth. Meanwhile, um, in the dining room, Fenlig raises a hand, and the beating stops. The man lies on the ground, you know, covered in blood. His wig has fallen off. His, his, his part of his dress has fallen off, and he's lying there. Um, Fenlig sort of um, is, is, is grinning to himself. He waves his hand about uh, and, he, and he says, take him away. Come now, let us continue the evening's entertainment. And the aristocrats, you know, uh, shivering, some of them splattered with blood with this kind of mad delight in their eyes, follow through as they sweep away into the grand foyer and begin to head uh, towards the ballroom. The two guards will come into the room, they will pick up the man, and they drag him off and they start to move him away into the, uh, into the distance. Um, the room that you are both gazing into, Pressy and Renault, is now empty. Lying on the ground is the wig. The Marie Antoinette yep. wig. And the dress and the, 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 the effects of her clothing. Marie Antoinette wig's pretty distinctive, isn't it? It very much is. That looks like proof to me. Do these windows open? Um, uh, you uh, fiddle with one of the latches. Um, you can make me a you can make me a, a locksmith test or a hard dexterity check to kind of rattle it open. Pressy. Uh, no. 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 Okay. Uh, I'm pretty dexterous. I'll have I'll have dex. Right, I was just gonna I was gonna put an elbow through the through the glass. Uh, give it a try. Make make your dex check. All right. I'll go. I'll be Plan B. Ooh, okay. Not a fumble. Not a fumble. Not a fumble. Not a fumble. It's not opening. In which case, Renault, do I you want to? I've been shaken by several of the things. I know we have a brief window. Is that does music strike up in the distance? Like as they go. Uh, the you room? hear you hear no music, but you can instead hear conversation um, coming from the ballroom. If I could hear conversation, maybe breaking glass is the best idea. Uh, it's pretty faint, uh, but yeah, it would be a risk. I'll tell you, it would be a sleight of hand check. I think. I I think this is more pushing the the like I'm oh, just oh actually that's to, a way I, better like, idea I don't yeah. want in like I don't want to like I think we need that wrong way though you know what uh I think we're close to done uh, I uh take my pistol get the butt of it and I, I smash the glass okay um there is a you know a, a clink and a crash as the glass um uh, explodes out and you scramble over you dart into the middle of the room and you grabbing grabbing the stuff yeah I I grab the 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 wig and as much of the dress I can, I sort of throw it out to Pressy. Um, as I'm like grabbing this, then going through the dress, looking for anything else of, of importance or proof and then throwing it back. And then I'm having a cursory glance around. I mean, there are a bunch of nobles gathered here. Any other embroidered handkerchiefs or proof that like uh, important people were here or, you know, a set of shoes. I, I don't know what evidence they might've left, but I'll grab that as well. And I'm just chucking shit out the window to Pressy. Yeah, you as can see as some can. effects. You're just going as quickly as you can. Um, uh, Pressy, you're catching things. Would you like to do anything else? Pressy, any other actions? Um, no, I'll just assist the sergeant as best I can. All right. Um, Hugel, you are about, if you've gone down, you realize how deep this is going yeah. into the earth. Would this you like seemed... to turn back or would you like yes, to keep going? Yes, I am, I, as, mu as much as I know, everyone in chat would very much like me to keep going. It's, and apparently also 
my Always. Fl- my friends. Um, this does not seem like a place that is safe to go on my own without backup and without like weaponry, which I don't really have a lot on me right now. Um, but it is definitely something that I'm like, maybe, maybe, yeah. I'm going to go find the sergeant to tell him that there is a thingy downstairs that we might want to investigate, not knowing that he's already smashed a window and is planning to leave. So, yeah. Okay. Save away. So you dart back up the stairs and just as you come to the top, you turn around the corner and you can see a footman uh, coming towards the stairs that you have just come up from. His back is to you, but he is dragging the body of this bloodied man dressed in a torn dress. You don't have the, the larger context of the Marie Antoinette that was just beaten, but you see what essentially looks like a, a man beaten within an inch of his life being dragged along by a footman. Um, he is kind of between you and the way out the servants' quarter door. You could duck into the grand foyer, which is where people have been coming, where, where, where the sort of nobles have been coming in. That area is pretty empty since most of the servants have now moved around to the coach court. Or you could duck sideways uh, into the ballroom where you know the conversation is happening. Uh, I am going to try something a little different. Okay. I am going to say, I'm terribly sorry, monsieur. I, uh, I, I am lost. Uh, I'm trying to find the way to the coach court. My, uh, my, could you help? Um, so the man hears you and he starts, uh, spins around, turns towards you. Uh, is any, uh, uh, yeah, make a fast talk check. Uh, Holy <laughs> shit. This I is going to go so well. Persuade. I know that's not really what I was going for, but I, I kind of want to persuade him that I, yeah. Yeah, no, unfortunately, this is this is a... He, uh, Go fast talk. My fast talk is not good. My yeah. fast talk is base. It's fine. Ooh, it's pretty close. Um, pretty close. Uh, he, he frowns and, and he says, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait there. And he, he moves and he like lays the guy down on on um on a uh, uh on, on one on the staircase and and he moves forward and he goes to he goes to grab your arm um not not is like super hostile but he's <laughs> saying like come with me um do you allow him to or are you going to attempt to i'm just gonna say monsieur i apologize uh but huh, my master wants something from the carriage and i'm sure you're aware masters do have a way of being very persuasive when they don't get what they want I would very much like not to... We will be going to the masters. I must, I must... Uh, the, the Count must know. Yeah. Please, sir, I, I, I really do not wish to disturb my master. He, he wants something, I forgot it. He does not yet know it is missing. And I would like to get this done as quickly as possible. So, I think this sounds like pushing a role, but you are being persuasive, so why don't you push the fast talk role with a persuade? Okay. Uh, if you fail this, then he is, he is essentially going to, like, he, 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 he will think that something is up and he will try to drag you before the comp. Okay. Because <gasps> uh, my persuade is bloody good. <laughs> uh, fine, get, get out of here. Through that door. And he thank goes you, back and you. he takes the body um, and you, you are able to, uh, to walk off. Um, uh, he puts the body um, sort of on the stairs. He does dart in for a second uh, through the door behind where you know the conversation is happening. And as the door opens, you will see inside for just a moment, all the aristocrats are now gathered around um, what you take for a second to be uh, a child. But you realize upon closer inspection is just a, a very small man who is dressed as the Dauphin and he has an apple stuck in his mouth. Um, And there is a a woman behind him in a dress um, holding a violin um, and all the aristocrats are laughing and then the door shuts. You see no more. I don't like them much myself, but I have some respect. You dart out the side. Um, and at this point, Renault uh, and Pressy, you've gathered everything that you can from this room. Um, you can also uh, rendezvous if you would like, Hugel. Unless you have a different uh, t- tactic you want to take, you can rejoin the others. Uh, I will. I will rejoin the others because I feel like the downstairs is important for them to know about. We should definitely go there because we we're still unseen and we're still unknown and no one knows we're here yet. Definitely. Excellent. In which case, you rejoin and you can say say as much to your sergeant. 
Sergeant, I found it downstairs. It's very deep. We should go. Thank you. What? What do, do you know? What is down there? No, I, I got about halfway down the stairs and then realized it was going to probably take as long again to get down to wherever it's going, and it did not seem like a place to go on my own, given that we are aware of what lurks in catacombs. Listen, we have, I have uh, evidence enough, don't we? I have seen some strange things tonight. This man is not all that he seems. I don't know the limits of what he can do, but it is unnatural everything that he is, I would be wary to go deeper. What we have is enough for the captain, I think. Is that right, James? Does this seem like acting evidence? This seems like acting evidence indeed. Um, you know, a blood-stained replica of one of um, Marie Antoinette's dresses, whoever get, has that in their possession is getting killed. Um, if, we, if we push further now, we risk losing everything. If we go deeper and get captured, this news will not get out. We need to, this needs to get to the captain. If we return, or when this man is punished, we can investigate this, the catacombs it's or whatever um, is beneath. In that case, I think we should force. leave. I think like Hugo catches sight of the broken window and is like, I think we should, in that case we should, uh, pardon Sajan, but I think we should leave. I agree. Um. <laughs> Nothing further anyone wants to do or look at? No. Oh. Then let no. us go. Let us go. All right. All right. I think we, I think Seems we Seems like it. a terrible idea right this point. I was case, thinking, like, three... do we want to leave, like, um, what was the message we found? Know your place? Like, scroll on one of the windows. It would be pretty... Does anyone have any... Does anyone have any spray paint or writing I mean, I do, like, being good at disguise, I reckon I probably have a makeup kit. Ah, uh, it's super out of character for me, but I, I want <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the Actually, it does is not, not it. <laughs> it's not super, I, like, just because I think it's a cool idea, and I hope if you're cool with it, Dave, I will, yeah, I will yeah, take that, because totally. Hugel does not like these people. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I think Hugel, like, absolutely, if there is a moment to, like, scrape in uh, some kind of, like, uh, like, coal or something like that, you know, I just, like, know your plate. Not massive, just, like, next Put to the window. the broken window, yeah. And just scratch, know your place in, or even like, not even with like into the brick, like just scraped in, and then, yeah. It's you. It's you a, have time to leave the message. You scroll it quickly, Renault. You see what Hugel is doing, and I assume bite your lip because you mm -hmm. kind of. All right, Pressy. You turn as well, gathered with your things. The three of you turn and you begin to break away from the house. And just as it starts to fade into the distance, all of you hear the shrill shriek of a violin, a single set of notes that drill themselves into your brains and make all of you stop, stunned in your tracks. All of you need to make a sanity check. How many, how many sanity okay. checks do you want, James? Oh, we, God. We've got, we've got, we've got, we've you, we you got, we've got, this is good. The, so the music starts and you hear this wave of just chaotic violin music that's echoing throughout it, far beyond where it should be able to go. And the, the force of it, you know, drives you to your knees for a couple of seconds and then it stops. We have to go. We have to go. Violin. Back up. You glance at each other. There was there was a violin. Of someone holding a violin. And someone dressed as the Dauphin. I'm not sure, but this is not good. Okay. We need okay. to go, and then perhaps we need to find out what is going on. If 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 the captain says we need to. I think I think we need to run, and we need to get out of Poissy as well. As long as we are near here, there is a chance that Fenelik will find us. We need to leave, we need to get back to Paris, and we need to speak we to the captain. I assume we're doing this as we're running towards Absolutely. the gates. Absolutely. Tearing forward where you rejoin your three companions at the gates, um, and yeah, evacuating, evacuating the collection of you will go, you will break out, you will make for where your horses are stationed, and before long, you will be fleeing into the night, leaving Poissy and the madness in the mansion behind you. You ride through the night, I presume. Yeah. You have would, we would also, uh, if the sergeant doesn't 
say anything. Um, Hugo will at some point sort of suggest politely to the other three that they divest themselves of the accoutrement of uh, the guards and go back to plain clothes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Although I think uh, we, 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 we keep the uniforms um, with us, just bundled, and it's evidence of some sort, you know? It's, who knows what it'll be used for? That's the captain's problem. May I, may I keep... Uh, you keep may, you may continue to wear it until we get back, but it is my wife's. She would probably quite like it back. Oh, may we, may we. But, you know, if you, if you like it, we can always try and find you another. That fits you a little better. You do, you do make a very fine woman, Prassi. Melody. No. I... <laughs> <laughs> For disguise right. purposes only, of, of course. course. I think depending on the uh, fate of Count Van Lick, such behavior would will be unfashionable in a very short period <laughs> of time. Um... I, I think like, Hugo looks confused because they haven't told me what they saw yet. And I haven't really told them. I think over the expanse of the the ride back, unless anybody is deliberately keeping anything back, you will share your information. The three at the gate will also share what they noticed, which is a horde of aristocrats coming in, of whom they have everybody's names. Um, And in particular, they explain a, a slight little disturbance that happened when one of the footmen came to deliver something to them, said... Who are you guys? So they knocked him unconscious and dumped him in the rose bushes. Um, uh, but he had with him um, a set of flyers, invitations, exactly the kind that you've learned you don't really need to get in, but are still dramatic and that like to be handed out. And they are a uh, invitations to another one of Fenelique's parties called um, uh, Le Fête des Animaux, the, the party of the animals, uh, that is taking place uh, just a few days hence. So Another party. Yes, that's right. It is on June 13th. Um, down the bottom of the invitation, it says oh, yeah. attendance is mandatory. Does it actually? It does, yeah, yeah. What the hell? Um, it's the grand weird. carnival of the animal. It commences at midnight on Saturday, June thirteenth. As in Friday night into Saturday morning, or Saturday midnight into Sunday morning? Because um, <laughs> it would be it would be Friday. I guess it would be Friday the twelfth into Saturday thirteenth. Okay, I don't like the animals being in- involved. That that strikes me as sacrifice or gross. I'm not sure it's animals necessarily as much as it might be people acting as animals oh yeah they were pretending in this one as well were they pretending or were all they the just same really this is this this gives us a time when we will catch them doing something debaucherous again mm. the only issue is that we have made us we were not uh silent we were not unseen they will know that they were being watched and they will be cautious however i still think he will be too confident i don't think he expects anyone to act against him i don't he seem he does not strike me as a man to 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 waver i suspect he will hold the party he will just have more guards and so we will need to come prepared if we return he does not strike me as a man Mm. Some of the things I saw tonight, I do not know how to reckon them. This man has power. He should not. Power reserved for God. He just like crosses himself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think you're right. I think, I think he will not suspect anyone will come against him. That he is confident. I'm not sure, based on what you said, Sergeant, that confidence is misplaced. We will return the information to the Capitan. He will know what to do, and he will tell us how to act further. In the meantime, Pressy, you are a man of God, or you came close to being one. None of what you saw here tonight can be explained by your books, can they? Uh, No. (laughs) No. 
<laughs> God was not in that house tonight. Maybe someone who thinks they are God, but not the Almighty himself. So, on that note, uh, your ride continues. You ride all through the night, and uh, by the time you arrive in Paris, the dawn has well and truly broken, um, and the city is already busy as people begin to move about their business. You arrive at that... Uh, the the customs area where you have to go through and it, it just takes you a while you realize now that you are bone weary you've stayed up all night um it will be another ride to get to versailles would you like to burn there straight away or would you like to take go home and take a rest beforehand we wait meeting? is the captain based in versailles yes his offices well, he has offices in versailles he he you he has asked you to meet him there uh, i'd say we just uh, this seems time pressing Yes, I, well. I think I think a brief moment to splash some water on our faces and then go. There's it, perhaps um, a moment to change horses. The only thing yeah, I'm concerned we'll, about is our horses being tired, but otherwise... I and think. we'll deposit the Holy Trinity uh, uh, here, the trio, Dupois, etc. Um, they can do paperwork or whatever. <laughs> uh, an endless amount in the army, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, so the collection of you... Uh, gather up, gather you. You will st won't be going home then. You'll just be stopping at the barracks, just enough time to, to get fresh horses to splash water on your face, and then turning and riding off towards towards Versailles. It is an exhausting trip, and by the time you arrive at the opulent gardens, you are once again utterly fatigued. As you dismount and you begin to walk through the courtyards, you can't help but see all the similarities that this place holds to Fenleek's Manor. You know, the, the opulence is still here. Um, there's just less people beating each other senseless, at least beating each other senseless in public. You move through towards one of the side buildings where guards will admit you to see Captain Manon immediately. Um, he invites you all in, sits you all down, and seeing the state you're all in, clearly twigs that something is up, sits down and says, well, make your report. We approached the manor under darkness. We found several guards at the front who were dispatched. One of them may be dead. We left Dupois and the other two there to get names, and I hand over the list with all the names on it. These are every noble we notice coming or going. Additionally, and I like empty my pockets of like buckles and things that I found inside. We know that they were inside and they witnessed some truly treasonous or debaucherous acts. We found signs of statues which are heretical in the garden. And there is a, I shudder to recall it, but there is a almost mummified corpse dressed as His Holiness the Pope, suspended in the foyer. Comte Fenelik himself led the events which were a re- not a recreation, I don't think that was factual, which were a uh, parade of Marie Antoinette and the King beating one another until one man almost died. And then there was a musical performance which we did not witness but was shrill and unholy. Uh, I did briefly see into the ballroom before I left. There was a small man dressed as the Dauphin with an apple in his mouth, much like you would a, a suckling pig on a table, and a lady with a violin and many, many aristocrats laughing. The um, Captain Melon's eyes go wide, and and he's he's listening in raptured. When you mention the Dauphin, like it's almost like he's been struck. Uh, you know, the, the Dauphin's body has not even been laid to rest yet, and and already Fenlik mocks him. Wait. Someone in chat points out that the captain should now make all, you know, 27 <laughs> sanity <laughs> rolls that we made. Oh, of course. Uh, it's I mean, I feel yeah. like second-hand information, like this kind of stuff is awful when you see it. It's bad when you hear it, but it's not like he yeah. doesn't get the full force of Outrageous. You know, everything. <laughs> What's the point? He, I mean, he's, look, he makes one at least. And as, as, he, sits, <laughs> as he sits there and kind of nods to himself a few times, um, he... he he says, well, this is 
I, I, I knew the man was dangerous. I did not know the extent to which he was dangerous, crazed. He, he is a lunatic. He must be treated as such. Sergeant, I want you to lead the, uh, an assault, the arrest of Comte Fenlick in the name of the king. You will have his access to as many men as you need. Oh, hell Cannons, yes. rifles. Uh, you, you have my full permission and I will accompany you. You have the authority of the army of France. We put a stop to this. Raise the house with cannon fire if need be. You said there was a, and you, I assume you've passed him over the, the, the invitations. And you say, you said yeah. there was a, uh, there's Did an, we there also, was a party. Have we passed over the dress and the wig? Yeah. Uh, as we, as we were saying that there was the rig or yep. the parade of, of that nonsense, we, we handed over evidence as it was relevant. Um, I think Sherrod, perhaps. Sherrod's a good word. Sherrod, yes. A, char- a parade is good. I think they're both good. Um, he will say, uh, he will say, there is a party on June 13th. We will have the assault ready for then. I expect you, Sergeant, to prepare it. Uh, requisition what men you need, what supplies you need. I will be there with my personal guard as well. We will put an end to this. I will prove your trust is not misplaced, Capitan. We will... Arrest this man, and he will be punished for the sins he has committed, and we will prevent the sins he would further commit. He he nods. Um, he leans in, says, and he says, "Of course, nobility, uh, nobility cannot be rightfully punished in this political climate." And he's silent for a minute. Finley will not be put to death, but. I have a be- I have an option that might not be better, but it's something. Dr. Rigaud has fallen out of favor with the king, but he still holds some power. As his final act as royal physician, he will declare Fenleek to be insane, so that he will be kept forever in Charenton Asylum, where he can be no longer a threat to anybody. It's the best we can do. I don't believe that this is uh, inaccurate either, Captain. The man is mad. I I tend to agree with you. Very good, then. Take some days to rest, prepare yourself, and we'll be ready for the assault. After saying your goodbyes, you will break free. There'll be no more grand action this session, but you do have some time. You will be returning to your homes, you will see your families, and you will have time to plan. What is your plan? Is there anything you want to do between now and when you prepare for the Grand Raid? I think as soon as we step outside from the captain and we're in the, like, in Versailles amongst the the grandeur, the sun is so beautiful, but we're still kind of, like, shaken by what we saw last night. I want to say to the others, no asylum can hold that man or that thing. If we go in and we have the opportunity, he must die. It must die. Your orders, Sergeant? These are not orders. We are, this is against the commands of the captain. This is, this is not official. This is us doing what we must do as men. As citizens of France and as God fearing men. That thing cannot walk the earth. Sergeant, I... I'm glad you said that, for I agree. But I am concerned... that we cannot kill something that is not a man. I do not think he will die so easily. Pressy, I know you say that this is not something from your books, but I beg you to look. Ask your father if he knows anything of what this devil could be. It may be our only chance. Besides that, everyone, take the time to pray tomorrow. We will arm ourselves as best we can, but if God is willing, that thing will fall. If he looks elsewhere, then 
We will have done what we can. It does not seem right that a man like that can go unpunished for what he has done just because he is noble. I think the Capitan can strip away his nobility and the doctor can do so as well as they commit him to an asylum, but it will be up to us to do everything else. Hey, Sergeant. All right. Uh, you have your orders, official and unofficial. We'll meet again in two days. I will commit myself to preparing the assault, readying the men and requisitioning supplies. The two of you, anything you can do to look into what this might be, will be valuable. Mr. Jean. All right. All right. And with that, the collection of you wearily return to your horses and ride off. You will return to Paris. Meanwhile, deep in the basement of his home, Comte Fenelique is standing in front of the man who was once uh, dressed in uh, Marie Antoinette's clothes, a nobleman who had attended the party uh, you know, just for a little bit of fun. Fenelique has tortured this man and is now only just hearing of the dead bodies in the garden, those left. He knows that they, um, that, that, that their, their people have been watching him. And before long, he will find the message that was left from him. When you arrive, Fenleek will be ready. And we'll leave the session there. Uh-oh. Oops. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, great, he great. can be as ready as he bloody likes. We're bringing an army. You, you absolutely are. It's true. So that is Nothing the can stand session. before cannon fire. Exactly. Ah, except maybe mist. <laughs> and a cat. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Probably that then. is the third <laughs> session of Reign of Terror. Remember, you can pick up Reign of Terror on Chaosium.com in uh, soft cover or in hard cover version. We will be back next week. Uh, we will be continuing this adventure. Remember to check out uh, the Call of Cthulhu classic Kickstarter and to check out Malleus Monstorum on Roll20. Uh, once again, thank you to Sirenscape, to Web Captioner, uh, and to Roll20, which we use to improve our games. And thank you, Art. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Dave. You thank were you, all great. Cheers, Jim. Uh, see you all next time. <laughs>